The fashion world's attention will turn to New York next week as celebrities and fashion influencers converge on the Met Gala. And today, modest fashion is growing as models embracing the hijab go mainstream and companies cater to the fashion needs of Muslim women. ABC's Mona Kosar Abdi recently sat down with three Muslim women to discuss how they navigate fashion and Western society as a whole while maintaining their religious beliefs. From the catwalks of Milan and New York to the covers of the largest fashion magazines around the globe, hijab-wearing models are redefining the face of fashion. The hijab is the most visible symbol of Islam, drapes around a woman's head covering the hairs, ears, and neck, a reflection of one's modesty. But modest fashion, once seen as a niche market, is proving to be big business. I sat down with Somali Norwegian model Rauda Mohamed, designer and former Project Runway contestant Renee Hill, and journalist Noor Taguri to discuss the evolution of hijab representation in fashion and unveil the realities of being a pioneer. We're seeing hijabi women on runways, on the cover of Vogue, and in all parts of fashion, really, behind the scenes as well. Is this a trend or is this here to stay? I think it's here to stay. How that looks is the question. But in a profession often criticized for its lack of inclusivity, some say hijab representation only scratches the surface and that diversity is often reduced to tokenism. When there is a lack of representation, all of the burden gets put yeah. on the few people who get tokenized. Mm, right. And it's a really hard challenge to keep the door open for people coming after you and, and yeah. all around you and do all the stuff, but like still be a person right. who's like trying to figure it out for themselves too. In recent years, we've seen the world's largest sportswear brands like Lululemon, Nike, and Adidas targeting modest consumers. Luxury fashion also getting in on the movement. I'm excited for tomorrow. We're gonna have a blast. We were there as Rauda Mohamed was getting ready to walk the red carpet for the H&M Mugler launch. I love the color. It's really nice. H&M making adjustments to ensure Rauda's religious beliefs were adhered to. Do you see the hem here or no? But Rauda says that many times that burden falls on her. When you come as a model, you're not only a model, you come in as an educator. You have so many roles that you need to play out because I don't get to come on set and be like my other colleagues. Right? I need to make sure that they understand th the way I look and they understand my culture and my religion and why this has to be done the right way. You don't wake up every morning like, well, I'm a social justice warrior. Like, what, am I, what is my <laughs> right, agenda right, today? Right. How do you navigate being now a person who is representing Muslim women, but also just trying to be yourself and just trying to live your life? It's a challenge trying to keep that life balance. It's really a challenge. When it comes to Muslims and Islam, no one wants to educate themselves. Mm -hmm. It's we always have to be the ones who jump through a fire hoop and walk you through Islam 101. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's just not fair. Renee Hill recalls having to speak up on the set of Project Runway Black about Black incorporating Black. time to pray okay. during filming. Once I was on the show, I did fight for myself in religiously. I told them, you need to come get me five times a day if you don't give me an alarm clock. If I don't have an alarm clock, you need to come get me for prayer. That's why like, these conversations can get really frustrating. Mm -hmm. Because we're sitting here, and even in this conversation, we're feeling like we have to constantly explain ourselves. But when you start to explain yourself so much to other people, you forget to check in with yourself. I have this overwhelming anxiety of not saying the right thing and not being, you know, what everybody needs me to be. Noor uses her platform as a journalist to take back her own narrative and amplify Muslim women. They need us more than we need them. I didn't know it was okay for me to say no because I used to think, well, what if this is the last time? So even if it might be exhausting and I don't want to do it, I just want to come on set and be a model, I understand that my responsibilities are bigger than than that. I have a higher purpose in life than just to be a model and take a picture and go home. But while hijab is being embraced on international runways, it has also been politicized in the global discourse. Compulsory hijab laws in Iran sparking protests after the death of Masa Amini improperly wearing her hijab according to government standards. And in the fashion capital of the world, France targeting Muslim women with several proposed hijab bans. I'm afraid to walk in the streets of Paris because you have politicians who are tweeting my name. They make me out to be the enemy of the state. And then I'm supposed to go for a job in Paris. In 2021, Rhoda launching a social media campaign called hashtag hands off my hijab. 
as a religious garb, the hijab has been politicized, right? Whether yeah. we talk about the hijab bans in France, whether yeah. we talk about the mandatory hijab laws in Iran. Yep. Yes. At the core of it, would you guys say that all this pushback is just about fighting for choice? Absolutely. And this is like a, something that I have trouble with too, is just like, all of this to me has always been about choice. But at the end of the day, a lot of the stories that are being presented or even the way that in our own community it's talked about is not the right to choose what to do, but the right to do the thing that they agree with. Right. And that strips choice from the right. equation. And there are people who would say that Islam and fashion, maybe they're just not compatible. Well, fashion is a storytelling medium. Mm -hmm. And storytelling is a very sacred tradition in Islam. Who do I want to be today? What is the story I have to tell today? Mm -hmm. And that's also why it's such a great responsibility when it comes to fashion that the stories are told in a representative, a revolutionary representative way because it's how we actually begin to connect with one another. So many people make beautiful clothes, mm -hmm. yeah. so many people. But the story behind that, what is the story, the authenticity yeah. of the story? Mm -hmm. Who is this person? That's what builds the community of the brand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.